live from Atlanta to all of you out there. How you doing? This is the live workshop from Pal to Tech. What do you think of the mic? I mean, actually it's useless. It's just a it's just a prop, okay? I have a boom mic that I use, but this just feels like what you'd want with a live show. And the problem with a boom mic is you can't, you know, say something really important or clickbaity and then do, you know, this. Right? It just doesn't work with a uh, with a boom mic. So I'm going to have to fix that. Anyway, how are you all doing? It is great to see you. Now that I finished my intro, let me see if I'm actually broadcasting. I have no idea. I'm just looking at a camera lens. One second. Anybody here? Anyone at all? Okay, good. Hello. We got people from Chile. We got people from Munich, England. Uh, David Lynch is, is, is discussing weather. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. And today we are talking about advanced filters on the Fujifilm camera. Now, I've done a video on this before, so I'm not going to go into the whole how to use it and all of that. But what I do want to show you is a feature of them that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. So the way I do these live workshops is first I teach you something. OK, we're going to do that right now. And then once I'm done with that, I'll do questions and answers and a little bit of an interaction with the audience. And so if you have questions, I, you know, save them for that part. And the reason I do that is because the biggest audience of these videos is going to be people that watch them months or years from now. And they're going to want to, you know, just get to the information as quick as they can. So I put that at the beginning. All right. So your Fujifilm camera has a feature called advanced filters, and it's really a misleading name. I mean, to be honest with you, it's kind of these little cutesy, fun toy looks that the camera can generate and when you take a photo. And it's funny because it's really confusing to find them and to, to set them. So I'm going to actually I'm going to go through that. So if you have a Fujifilm camera, why don't you grab one? The demo that I'm going to be showing is the X-T4. OK, just like that. It's the same process on an X-T3, I believe, a GFX, an X-T2. But if it is not like this on your specific model of camera, I apologize. Um, Fujifilm, if you're watching this, if you could just go ahead and send me every single Fujifilm camera, that would be great. Then I can test in everything. All right. Cool. OK, so the way you turn on advanced filters, you actually have to do two things. All right. The first thing that you have to do is on the dial itself. I don't know if you can see it here on the dial itself. Rotate the dial. So it says ADV. You see that right there? ADV. ADV for advanced filters, obviously. OK, so the second thing that you want to do is you want to that's not enough. You have to do one more step. And that is you need to go into the menu just like this. And you would think that this would be, you know, anywhere but where it is. <laughs> so actually, it's right here. It's in the little camera icon under drive setting. OK, look at this advanced filter setting. You see that? And when you click on that, you have all these choices here. You see them? And as I say, not all cameras will have that. So just keep that in mind. I hope yours does. If it doesn't have that, watch anyway. It's a fun video. OK. <laughs> all right. So here we are. We've got advanced filter. And you have things like, you know, toy camera, miniature, pop color, and all that. Um, one of the ones that's kind of cool, I like the partial colors. So. We're going to use this Rubik's cube here, OK, for the partial color. And I'm going to aim the camera at the Rubik's cube right now. All right. So I'm aiming it at the Rubik's cube. And if I go into my settings of the advanced filter, remember, it's in drive setting. Advanced filter setting. OK, here it is now. Partial color orange. Well, there's no orange right now on the Rubik's Cube, but check this out. Yellow. Oh, I see a little bit there. Green, <laughs> right? Blue. Okay, purple. 
and red. You see that? There's red right there, okay? Which is kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick one of these colors. I'll just pick the green one because it's pretty easy to see right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of it. All right, I was a little close there, but that's okay. Okay, so I just took a, a shot of a Rubik's Cube using the advanced filter. Now, here's the thing, okay? You would think because the camera is doing all of the processing that the camera is going to spit out a JPEG, okay, right? Well, actually, I had my camera set in IQ. Hold on, it's not here, it's here. I had my camera set to fine plus raw, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we are going to take out the SD card, all right, just like that. And I'm gonna put it in the computer and I wanna show you something, okay? Let me just make sure this is set up to do that. All right, I gotta to go to the computer here, bear with me. Okay, we are back here. Um, boom, okay, good. Computer's there. All right, so I'm gonna put the contents of whatever was put on this SD card live right now. Hope I don't have anything weird on here. I'm gonna put this into the computer live. You're gonna see it and I'm gonna show you the secret, okay? So let's do that. All right, I am putting the disk in the drive right now, and I am going to the finder, and I am looking for it to appear. <laughs> yeah, I forgot, I'm on a Mac. Why would it appear? <laughs> oh, there it goes, okay, good. <laughs> Just all, <laughs> that would be all I'd need is for this demo, you know, Pal the Tech can't even make an SD card appear in his computer. That would just be wonderful for me. All right, all right. So we're back on the computer. Here it is, this is the SD card. There it is in here. Look at this. I want you to look at this, okay? Look at this. There are two files in here. There's two files. Now I'm gonna go into Lightroom, okay? I'm in Lightroom right now, and, I, and in Lightroom I just see one. I'm gonna go ahead and import it. I gotta pick a folder here. I think it's live show three, there it is. Okay, I'm importing it right now. So it's being imported into Lightroom. And it's taking forever. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's just sitting there. Importing files is just sitting there. Okay, what is going on here? Back to here. They are here, aren't they? There they are. All right, let me try renaming them. You know, let's try this. Um, we'll call this JPEG version. And we'll call this one raw version. All right, let's try it again. Maybe that did something weird to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and close this out. Okay, let's go back to import. And I got the spinning wheel of delay. You see that right there? Spinning wheel of delay. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because we once again are seeing the Mac computer at its finest. Um, this is an M1 Mac laptop, which can't seem to handle Lightroom actually opening up a single photo today, <laughs> right? So what I am going to do is I'm going to quit Lightroom. Yeah, see, check this out, check this out. Have a look at this, not responding, you see that? That's live for you, that's live for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart Lightroom, okay? And I think it'll work this time. Usually it does on the Mac. It's like you have to kick it to make it work. In the meantime, while it's restarting, let me look at the comments. Jose, how you doing? Yes, I restarted Adobe Serve. Awesome. Uh, we got Timothy here. Vishal, my man Vishal. Uh, we got a lot of people. How you doing? <laughs> okay, so let me try it again. I now have... <laughs> Lightroom. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. I'm restarting Lightroom Classic, force quitting it again because it crashed again. Now, this is interesting. I just updated it with Adobe's new, whatever their new update is. Um, maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know, but I'm going to try and open it up again. It's not absolutely mandatory I get it open to show you this kind of secret, but I'm hoping that it will open because um, it would be really nice to show you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Show all windows. Let's see. Nope, don't see it yet. Oh, this is so funny. Let me go to my screen here. Hold on. Let me switch to the computer. Switching to the computer. I'm still here. I haven't left. It's just black for a second. Okay. We're here. We're back in trying to make Lightroom work, and it will not. Okay. So um, we cannot make Lightroom work, which is one of the reasons, honestly, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a quick rant on something and then I'm going to get back to showing you the secret. All right. Because, you know, you just saw live that I couldn't have Lightroom on an M1 Mac open up a single photo. It crashed twice. So I'm restarting it again to see if it works in. And I could try it in Capture One and all that, but I don't want to go down that road. In the meantime, what I would like to do is explain. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for voting on the whole Mac versus PC poll that I had. So many of you voted for that. And that was awesome because I had asked, for those of you that didn't know about it, I asked, you know, which one do you use? You know, Mac iOS or do you go PC kind of Android? Or, you know, I probably should have had a third one in there for both, but I just wanted the two. So I put in that, a lot of people answered it and the PCs won out. Not by as big a margin as I thought, but they still won. So what I am based, first of all, thank you for answering that. And I don't, I don't ask a lot of the audience. I, I, I don't like the whole, I want your feedback all the time thing. I, I ask very rarely actually, but when I do it, I take it very seriously. So I, I took what you said very seriously and brand new to the pal to tech studio is a PC. Okay. I now have a PC in addition to the old Mac, all right? So I have both. And the reason I did this is because I'm working on part two of the Synology tutorials and the file management, and there are significant differences in how Synology and RAID drives, photo storage, photo organization, security, network access to your photos, and on and on and on. There's significant differences in how they work on Mac to PCs. And it would be doing you a disservice if I only used Max. So, I, but I didn't want to go down the road of having to do both if none of you use PCs. So that poll that I gave was so important. So thank you. And now you know why I asked that question and that's it. All right, let me go back and see if we can get Lightroom to cooperate. What I'll do is I'll see if Photoshop can open. Okay, Photoshop just opened just fine. So we have Photoshop opening. Let me try Lightroom. I want you to see this. You know I'm not crazy. All right, I'm opening Lightroom. I'm clicking on Lightroom Classic. Boom. Okay. And I'm waiting. Tick tock, tick tock. I'm waiting. Live show. People from all over the world watching Adobe. <laughs> right? Okay, we're waiting here. We're still waiting. And it shows open, but nothing's happening. That's just Photoshop. Okay, so let's do this. I am going to see if I can get it open. Hold on, where are you folks? I'm going to see if I can get it open on this one because I just want to be able to get the thing open. And if I can get it open, there's just a setting in Lightroom that I need to show you actually now that I think about it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up a just kind of a fake catalog here and then I'll use the... <laughs> We're going to go old school on this one. I'm going to use, you know, this, this way of doing it, right? Okay. We're going to do this way of doing it. Okay. Software updates. When can I, there we go. Look at this. Check it out. <laughs> Lightroom Classic has encountered an error and needs to close. You know what? F Lightroom, okay? That's what I have to say. F Lightroom, that's it. I should have done this live show and capture one. You are seeing it. I, I didn't plan it this way. 
what I wanted to show you, all right, I'm just gonna walk you through it. So use your minds and imagine, all right? Imagine that Lightroom opened and imagine that the two, you know, the photos that I took on this camera appeared in the import screen in Lightroom, okay? There is a setting in Lightroom that says treat raw and JPEG files as two separate files. And if you toggle that, if you tick that, it's in the preferences. If you, t if you toggle that to treat them as separate files, you will see, with regard to the photo I took, the Rubik's Cube, you would see the Rubik's Cube photo processed with just the red or just the green, you know, that I shot with the advanced filters. You would see that version and you would see the raw file. That's what I wanted to show you. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna show you it in Finder right now. I know that works on the Mac. So let me go show you that in Finder. I am opening up Finder right now. Let me go to the, it's right here. <laughs> it's not opening. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, I am taking the SD card out and using a completely different Mac. Luckily, this Mac is from 2015, and guess what it has, folks? An SD card slot. So I'm gonna try and put that in the SD card slot. Luckily, it has an SD card slot. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it and do this demo, hopefully getting it working for you. Okay, good, I got it working, I see it here. What I'm gonna do is stand up and show you I'll tell you, you know, these live shows are so unpredictable because all of this would have been edited out if this was a normal Pal Detect video. You wouldn't see me griping about Lightroom, all that. I think this is more fun though, in a way. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go overhead cam. I'm gonna kind of move this out a little bit. I just, I wanna show you something. So if we go into the contents of the card, all right, look at how there's two files you see that there's two files one of them is the jpeg there it is you see that's our jpeg that's the jpeg we took with the advanced filters and so what happened was the camera processed it in the camera and then it spit it to the sd card as a jpeg okay that's photo number one let me show you photo number two now okay photo number two <laughs> Look at that. There's photo number two. There's photo number two. Okay. That's the secret. The secret is this. A lot of people use these advanced filters and they don't realize that you also get a raw file in addition to a JPEG. And with that raw file, you get all the same benefits as you would with any raw file. You're just getting the camera sensor data straight into a raw file. So let's say you use the advanced filters and you go out and you shoot a bunch of shots. And then later on you decide, you know what, that, that Rubik's Cube shot was so great, but I kind of wish that I had a normal picture of it. Well, you can get that. The key is you need to make sure that in your camera settings, right, when you're doing that, you go into image quality and make sure that you're shooting fine raw and normal raw, okay? Does that make sense? And I have one more thing to tell you. Let me make sure I'm still live on the stream. <laughs> okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay, uh, I really wanna get to your comments. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them like out of the corner of my eye and they're hilarious. <laughs> the comments are my favorite part. The problem is if all I did was sit and read the comments, you know, people who watch this, you know, a month from now would be like, you know, what's this crap? You know, dislike, thumbs down, I don't like it. So I, I, I'll look at them in a second. All right, so the second thing you need to know, okay, there's the secret of that. The other, it's not a good secret, but it is kind of a secret in that nobody talks about it. When you're shooting in that mode, that advanced filters mode, you cannot manually focus the camera. You can't, it won't work. Let me show you. 
So I'm going to go into um, right here. No memory card. Whoops. Let me put a memory card back in. Hold on a second. It's so funny when I do this live because on one hand, I don't have to do any editing. This is great. Tonight, I can go to bed early. I don't. I, I could do whatever. I don't have to read. I, I mean, I don't have to go and edit and do all these things. But on the other hand, it, it's live. So I just put an SD card in. Let's get back to this. Okay, so we're back here. Now, if I go to take the shot right now, uh, let me show you. I am putting... The camera is in manual. Do you see that? Okay. Camera's in manual. All right. So I am now going to rotate the focus ring. All right. Rotating the focus ring. Here we go. And let me focus on something else. Yeah. All right. Now I'm rotating the focus ring. Rotating the focus ring. Look, look, look. Rotating it, rotating it, and nothing is happening. Nothing's happening. So you cannot manually focus if you use the advanced filters, number one. Number two, you can go back later on, as long as you've set your camera to shoot JPEG and RAW, you can go back later on and have a RAW copy. And I think that that actually makes the little toy advanced filters more enticing to use because you know that you've got that raw file right suppose it's a it's a shot you just really love you've always got the raw file but you can experiment a little bit with those filters and and they are kind of cool and kind of fun so anyway that's the secret it's not a huge secret but it's a secret i don't think anybody knows about it and i couldn't find a lot of information about those things but i noticed that they were coming off the camera in both raw and jpeg would have loved to show you it in lightroom maybe another day okay um adobe if you're watching this yeah i'm not going to go there okay let me look <laughs> at the comments Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back a little bit on the comments. Let me switch back the cameras around. Okay, are we back here? Hello. All right. So we're done with the educational part of the tutorial. Thank you for joining us. Those of you watching the pre-recorded version, you can go now because um, the next bit of this is the live version for all of the really cool live people that are here. Okay. So who's here today? Who's with me? Ah, uh, we got. Let's see all the some of these names <laughs> new player okay new player asks does a canon lens work on a fuji yes but you have to have an adapter you, you got to have an adapter that's all you got to get one of these things um like this okay uh it looks like this Okay, so yeah, you put the lens in on one end and you put the other end in on the Fujifilm camera and at that point you're good to, uh, to do it. So yes, you can definitely have an adapter for a Canon lens. Now, if you do, most if not all of the Canon lenses, I believe, I think all of them are not going to be autofocus. So you're going to be manually focusing, which brings up an interesting point you probably then would not be able to use the advanced filters with an adapted Canon lens. Hmm, interesting. Okay, what else do we have here? I hope that helps answer your question. Um, okay, Capture One or Lightroom? I don't know. I, I mean, you know, I like stuff that works. Now, in fairness to Adobe, I'm sure there's a problem that maybe it was the M1, Maybe, you know, I don't know, I sneezed wrong or something, but at the end of the day, it didn't work. And I, I just, it, it, I've noticed that I've had these problems and it's not like this is an old computer. This is an M1. I mean, it's, it's a fair, it's a year old and I'm running the latest version of Lightroom Classic. So um, I don't know. What do I like better for raw processing? Capture One, no question about it. Uh, does that mean you cannot make raw files in Lightroom look as good as you can in Capture One? No, you can. There are 
videos on the topic. There are tutorials on how to do it. Uh, and you can, by adjusting the various sharpening slider settings and things like that, you can make your raw files look really good in Lightroom. But to answer that question, Lightroom or Capture One, the thing that's still bothering me is that we are years into Fuji and Fuji is going places. You know, they're, the GFX, I mean, they're, they're doing well. And we have a lot of third party lenses that are coming out. Now they're coming out with zoom autofocus lenses and things like that. So for Adobe not to really find some way, some kind of toggle switch when you open Lightroom, you know, I am a, I am a Fujifilm user, tick, for it to better demosaic those files is for me disappointing because it's been long enough. So Lightroom or Capture One, Capture One, but there's a steep learning curve to it. Um, I happen to know a YouTube channel that has done some tutorials on Capture One. It starts with a P and ends with an H. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see here. What do we have? The biggest is okay. Um, pre-order, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> Someone wrote crap doorbell. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to leave us. Uh, who is that? <laughs> Sklogsy one. Okay. I wish you didn't have to leave us. I don't know who's at the door, but they're not as important as this live stream. Okay, anyone else? Any questions for me before I go? Hello, Nifty 50 from Spain. Hello. Let's see, we got uh, all this stuff. And I don't want to get back into talking about Mac, so I'm not going to answer any more Mac versus PC questions. They both have their uses. They both have their problems. They both suck, and they both are awesome at times. It just depends. Um, somebody's saying Darktable is a great solution. I've tried Darktable in terms of a photo editing software. I personally just could never wrap my mind around getting used to the controls of Darktable. That does not mean Darktable's not good. It just wasn't my cup of tea, that's all. I'm, I prefer Lightroom and uh, Capture One. Okay, let's see. What else? We have uh, Timothy, okay, should have bought a PC. I did get a PC right here. Got a PC now. Um, okay. Let's see, let me go back to the most recent comments. Frank from the Netherlands. Hello, Frank. Will you be showing off the... Oh, here we go. Vishal asks, will you be showing us all the awesome Halloween decorations? Yes, I will. I'm going to shoot a little intro video of those. My wife creates all of the Halloween props. Our, our house okay, is like Halloween Disneyland. I mean, there are animatronic props, there are lights, there's rear projection systems there. I mean, it's, it's big. So yes, I'll do, I'll, I'll have a little intro video on that for sure and, and show you guys, absolutely. Um, can advanced filters or some of them be applied in post? I, no, not, not in post that I know of. I know that Lightroom can't do it and I know that Capture One can't do it. So can they apply stuff like, you know, toy camera. Yes, they, you can get little plugins and things that can make, you know, Photoshop take your photo and look like the toy camera filter. But as far as the official Fujifilm, you know, camera advanced filters, you cannot do it outside of the camera. Okay. Um, okay. What else here? Let's see. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Frank. Grovers, okay. Florian, what do I think about Luminar? Um, I am liking Luminar for very special things. Like I, I don't think Luminar would be something that would ever replace Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One for me. But what I'm loving about Luminar is not Luminar 4, but Luminar AI. And I love the fact that you can pull up a photo and with a click of a button, change the sky. You know, ooh, I probably shouldn't, that's, that's sacrilege, right? I mean, it's coming, AI is here. We have to deal with AI. So I'm looking at it as it's more of, it, it's a fun thing, it's interesting, but as those features get added, right? As more and more of them get added, the gap between, are you a photographer 
or are you a digital manipulator narrows. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. Hello from Romania. Hi, Romania. Okay. Oh, uh, where are we? Barcelona. Okay, Barcelona. Hello there. Hello. What streaming software? First of all, I'm not on a green screen. This is this is real. Look, see? <laughs> this is real. Um, there's no green screen. No green screen. Um, I do have a gaming channel and I, I play games with my kids. I do live streams with that and I do put a green screen behind me. I never do it for these workshops. So that's the real studio behind me. As far as what streaming software I use, I use OBS, just regular free OBS. And that's it. And just wire it into YouTube. Uh, and I'm still learning it. I'm probably the worst, the world's worst streamer in terms of getting it right technically, you know, having just everything ready and just, it's so rough around the edges lately. And this is now my third live workshop and probably my 10th stream. And I just, I'm still struggling with it. I feel like a complete imbecile. I feel like an amateur when it comes to live streaming. And on one hand, it's embarrassing. I mean, I was, I had knots in my stomach before I went live today. I thought I was going to throw up seriously, but it challenges me, right? It's because I'm always cutting out stuff and editing. And so when I'm doing camera demos and things like that, that starts to get repetitive after a while. And live stream is a way of kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> ratcheting things up a little bit. Okay. Uh, do I have a video on streamlining photo calling and batch editing? No, I am going to include a photo. Uh, sorry, I'm going to include a video on the process that I use, which involves photo mechanic, which is another piece of software, but one that I think is the single best way you could possibly call photos. And what that involves is I I'll take, you know, I come back from a shoot. I take the SD card out of the camera. It goes into the computer, provided it has an SD slot, goes into the computer and I open it up in photo mechanic and in photo mechanic, I'll go through and delete, delete, delete. I just hit delete on anything that's not in focus, you know, which is a lot. Delete, delete, delete. And then I'll go back in real quick. And in photo mechanic, they just go, Hunk. I mean, literally an entire page of uncompressed, you know, XT4 files. Hunk. They all just appear like that. I'm hitting delete, 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 delete. And then I go back, I do it one more time and I hit four stars and, and five stars for the best of the best or this really good ones. And then that's it. And then I take that folder and I import it into Lightroom or Capture One. And that star rating is already now brought into those programs. And from there, I go through and I fine tune my calling. That's the 30,000 foot summary of how I do it. But I am now changing all of this around because I'm doing this series on Synology and on RAID drives and on network attached storage. And I want to incorporate that so that and I'm getting I'm getting very serious about this series of videos because um, I, I want to show you on both the Mac and the PC on how to do that. So, yes, I am going to be doing more on on workflow and calling for sure. If I ever reviewed the Fujifilm Ross software, yes, I have a video on that somewhere. It, it was about a year ago. Uh, live stream. Okay. So Charles says live streaming is a very forgiving medium here. on do, you know what it is? You all are so awesome. I don't get all the nice comments come in on the live streams. Okay. Which is just great. And you all are so supportive when you're a YouTuber, there is an area inside YouTube studio, right? Where it shows all of your comments. Okay. And it has two tabs. It has comments that I have not responded to. And then it has a little tab that says, um, comments awaiting approval. <laughs> okay. And that's the, that's the area where YouTube steps in and says, you might get upset at these comments. <laughs> okay. You might get upset at these comments. So we're going to hide them from you. So you don't get triggered. We're going to hide them from you. But if you really want to see them, they're not with the general population comments. They're hidden here. So you have to click a box and then, then it opens up and you have to brace yourself, you know, a couple of glasses of whiskey or something, but brace yourself, 
for some of those comments. So, um, but I don't see that in live streams. Live streams are are different for sure. You're right. Um, okay. Hi, Alfred from Mexico or Alfredo. I'm sorry. I didn't see that properly. Okay. The, the font, you need an electron microscope to see this font. It's tiny. Um, have I shared any Fuji film simulations that I like? Peter, I like Eterna mostly for video because it gives more of a flat profile. So Eterna and I love classic Chrome. I love that one. And I have totally forgotten now, but there is a film simulation. Can someone say it in the comments? There's a film sim that only comes with the GFX 100. Oh, it's it's uh, nostalgic. I think it's nostalgic negative. I love that one too. Those are my favorite. Um, and the one, if you're looking for a film sim to just kind of cover everything, pro negative standard, I think is a good one and pro negative high. Um, and pro V is a good one too. Um, but pro negative standard is, I think, slightly better with the histogram and Eterna is slightly better with the histogram at matching the accuracy more. Okay. All right. Paulo from Portugal. How you doing? Okay. Uh, what age did I stop street fighting? That's a really good question. What age did I stop street fighting? I'm still street fighting. I got into a fight with a couple of YouTubers in, the, in an alley just a few weeks ago, they put a video out. Oh, what the hell was it called? Um, the blank about Fujifilm cameras. It was an all capitalized five letter word. Yeah, I'm, I, I still do a little street fighting, you know. Okay, been using the she method. Awesome, I forgot about the she method. That was from an old video and I don't even remember what it is. I'd have to review my own videos. That's the thing, when you make this many videos, you, you actually forget. And so when I see the comments, when they're coming in as like all the comments from all the videos, someone will say something like, why the hell did you plug the HDMI port into that, 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 that? And I'll be like, what, what are you talking about? And I, <laughs> I gotta go back because I don't remember the video. So <laughs> yes, Michelle, I'm joking. Um, uh, let's see, how do we get uh, that bokeh full frame look like the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2? What lens adapter, what has combo as the lowest f-stop on an X-T3 in that wide a range? I guess the 50 f1 would be pretty close um, to that, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'd like you guys to jump in on that one and, and see if you can help them out. Um, that would be great. But uh, let's see, thing here. street fighting, we covered street fighting. <laughs> We covered film film simulations and street fighting. We're doing great on this this live stream. Um, no, and and I'll and I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I was in such a crappy mood earlier today. I got some stuff going on in my personal life. I don't want to get into it. Family stuff, and not immediate family. But I I was in a really bummed out mood today, and I shot my Fast Friday video. That was tough because I was not in the mood to shoot a Fast Friday, but I have to shoot it today in order for it to be edited and finished by Friday. So I shot the Fast Friday video because tomorrow I'm gonna finish the script on the Synology video, right? Um, and so I was in the worst mood. I was just so grumpy. And I there's something about when you schedule a live stream. So I schedule it for 30 minutes out. And the minute you hit schedule in YouTube, if you go to your channel on the YouTube website, if you go to your channel slash live, right? YouTube gives you a special URL. So for me, it's youtube.com slash pal tech slash live. And so the minute you schedule something, even if you don't go live, but the minute you schedule it, YouTube publishes it there. And then if that's not enough to see, oh, wait a minute, this is actually live. I have 30 minutes. It then shows you down below, you know, 12 people waiting, <laughs> you know, like that. It's like, oh my God. You know, cause sometimes, you know, you, do you ever do something where you, you get so excited about something and you start something, but then you're like, you know what? I, I changed my mind. I don't want to do it. That's what live streaming is like. The minute though you hit schedule, it's out there and YouTube has no problem telling you that people are waiting. 
people are waiting. And so I, I was so down in the dumps and that immediately pulled me out of it. And then just seeing your comments here, you are so awesome and I'm so glad you're here. I hope everybody's doing well around the world. I really, really do. And as I've always said, my number one favorite thing about this channel, it's not the photography, it's not the Fuji gear. It, oh, that's a close one though. It's not the photography, it's not the Fuji gear, it's not the challenge or the creativity or the art or the whatever. You know what it is? It's the fact that I get to interact with people all over the world. I love that. I love that. I love it when I get comments that are like in all Arabic or all Russian and I have no idea. I got to go to Google Translate, you know, and I'm like, oh God, what are they saying about me? <laughs> you know, and I look and up it comes and it's like, you know, thank you very much. You are kind fellow. Love your videos. Hello from Riyadh. You know? <laughs> Something it's like, oh, that's so awesome. I've never been there, but they, they're halfway around the world and they, they're excited about photography. How much of a better job could you get than doing that? Okay, uh, where are we here? Let's see, we got people talking. Okay, when, when feeling, okay, so Jose says, when feeling sad, sing, dance, and smile to a stranger. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Although there are some places, you know, maybe Midtown Manhattan at, two o'clock in the morning, you may not want to do that. But yeah, most places, <laughs> you know, you could sing, smile and dance. That will make you feel better. The act of just smiling can make you feel better. So yeah, that's, that's definitely great advice. Definitely great advice. So we got, I want you all to look through these comments because I'm seeing some recipes come up that are really good. One of them from um, Snicker, what is it? Snickers somebody, Snickers bar, Snickers something. Minus two shadows, minus two highlights, Eterna she color for the flattest file. Oh, okay, that was the she method. I okay, got it. All right, good. Thank you for putting that up here. Um, am I tempted to go Sony or Canon R5? <sighs> okay, um, I, I got to answer this because it's it's an important question. Am I tempted to go to Sony? Hmm. Well, the answer to that is there's always temptation for that. And it has nothing to do with the camera at all. It has to do with what I can do with this channel. And there's only so many settings I can go over in Fuji. There's only so much I can talk about with film sims. And I, and I, I do worry about that. I mean, is it boring after a while? How much can I talk about just Fuji? And I look at a channel like Omar Gonzalez, great guy, awesome channel. The guy has forgotten how to be an awesome, he's forgotten more, Omar has forgotten more about being an awesome YouTuber than I'll ever learn. He's, he's incredible, but he doesn't just do Fuji and he, you know, he's doing other cameras. And so, you know, would I ever, would I ever full blown switch for my own photography? Hell no. But would I start to incorporate Sony and Canon into this channel for things like comparisons? Um, you know, that, that sort of thing. I've thought about it. Uh, yeah, because, you know, my channel's kind of flatlined. I think I've got a lot of Fuji people here and I love that, but there, it's not like Fuji is the number one brand and it's not like I can continue to sustain the channel just on Fuji. And, and so that's why I'm stepping into things like Synology, workflow, editing, software. You know, I want to continue to expand. I don't see it happening anytime soon, but if for whatever reason, the Fuji just continues to flatline and Sony comes out with a camera that everybody is screaming is as good as, you know, Fuji, I'll, I'd like to compare it. Even if I rent the camera and compare it, you know, I might do that. Sure. Um, but I just love Fuji and I made a whole video called why I love Fuji. And, and, and so I'm not going to go over it here, but go see that video. That's why I love Fuji for sure. Um, okay. So, you know, listen, people are going, no, like Darth Vader in that scene. No, I'm not switching from Fuji. <laughs> I'm not switching from Fuji. I love this thing. I love this thing. Okay. From my cold dead hand. Okay. You're not taking this thing from me. So I love Fuji. But I do need, I mean, YouTube for me has now become 
my day gig, my, my job. I mean, this is, I'm taking it that seriously for me. And so I do have to think long-term and, and what long-term is going to be sustainable for the channel. Um, and I do think that, you know, how many, how cool would it be for some of you Sony users if I had had a couple of videos on, oh, are you coming from a Sony A7 whatever to an X-T4? Here's what you need to know. Here's how to get up to speed quickly. Those would be very helpful videos, I think. Okay. Flashes, lights, and filters. Yes, Yan, thank you for that comment. The Godox uh, AD200, the, there's, there's a few units I want to discuss. Those are coming as well. I was originally going to do those before the Synology, but Synology and I have been in communication and I got to kind of strike while the iron's hot. They're looking toward this series. They've been very helpful in supporting the channel and sending me that test unit. And I've also bought my own Synologies, but they did send me a test unit. So I'm, I'm doing those. But yes, the flash and speed lights are definitely another area that this channel could branch into. And I, and I want that as well. Yeah. Okay. What is my favorite Fujifilm model? That's like saying, what's my favorite child? Um, okay. Uh, um, what is my favorite Fujifilm camera model? That doesn't mean it's the camera I use the most, okay? Is everybody clear on that? It's not the camera I use the most, but my favorite Fujifilm camera model is the X-T3. That's my favorite of all. But I don't use it very much in a majority of the time because of this. I need this flip around screen for a lot of what I do. Um, but the X-T3, when you look at just the price and what it can do and just the ergonomics of it for me, that's that's my favorite. I love that camera. I just love that camera. Um, and the X-T4 is, you know, just a, just a notch below it. Um, but those are the cameras that I own. Now, if I take any camera on planet Earth, it would be the GFX 100. Okay, that, that, that's like, every time I say that, I just, the breath comes out of me. And there's a light in the studio that kind of shines down at an empty spot back there where that camera doesn't exist. Because I, I, it was a loner. I, I didn't have that camera, right? I, I, but that is the hands down the best camera. That image quality of that camera is beyond words. It's incredible. Just, that's my favorite camera. Uh, okay. What do the NASA astronauts shoot with now? I believe they all use either Nikon or Canon. They don't use Sony, I'm pretty sure, but Nikon or Canon, I believe it's, I believe it's actually Canon now. Hey, if there's any astronauts watching this, chime in. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, and by the way, I have to say this because we're all talking about gear. It doesn't matter the gear you have, right? What matters is lighting, lighting and composition. Okay, so um, yeah, and and Mo Mo says I've I've rinsed the Fuji menu setting to the max, so I should expand into more camera systems. Yeah, I mean that that's that's there. There's also a cost factor because when you rent cameras, they're not cheap. They're you know it's like a hundred bucks or something for a week. I mean it's it's not cheap. And for me to do a review, for example, when I did the XT4 review, I had that camera for six months before I did a review on it. Um, obviously that's a little bit long, but the cost adds up. So yeah, I mean that, definitely wanna do that, but there's the budget to consider as well. And yeah, uh, to, and the other thing is, and I'm hoping this comes soon, either an X-T5 or an X-H1. I'm hoping for the X-T5 between the two. Um, I think that Fuji is in a great place right now with the APS-C and X-T5 could be the most incredible camera ever made. If, if they're really paying attention to what you all have been posting and saying and telling that you need, because there are some things that with the X-T4, with regard to the flip around screen, that a number of photographers felt frustrated by, because if you're holding the camera in a certain way and you want it to tilt down and be dead center of the camera, it can't really do that. So. Um, I hope the X-T5 can take those things into account. Uh, and, and who knows? We'll see. And, and video too. It has a, there's an opportunity for video maybe 
you know, 6K or something like that. Or I, I don't think 8K would be possible, but maybe 6K. Who knows? Okay. Um, okay, so Nico says he loves Affinity 10 times more than Adobe. Okay, I am working on a video right now where I am comparing every single raw file editor and trying to just, when you first open up an image in it, and not obviously you can tweak it and make it look great, but when you first open up an image, which one looks the best? And I'm not done by a long shot, but I've been using Affinity and Affinity is pretty damn cool. I like Affinity a lot. I mean, I just don't have the time to keep learning new software, but I would look into Affinity if I didn't have any other photo editor and I was shopping for photo editors, I would get the 30 day trial and play with it. Sure. Affinity is definitely something cool. I, I like it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the XS10, I love the XS10 as well. I did a review on that, but not for me. Uh, and, and it's just the simple reason that I love the top dials, you know, and that's what I love about Fuji is they have all these different kinds of cameras where, you know, someone that wants that type of ergonomic style can get, you know, the XS10 and someone who wants these top dials can go X-T3, X-T4, X-T2 route, right? So, um... All right. <laughs> okay, so update to, let's see. All right. Well, listen, everyone, I am going to have to run. I could go on and on and on. Get the iguana. All right, I'll get the, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, so um, before I leave, thank, sorry for the technical screw-ups, but I think you got the point about there's two files that get generated. If you go into Lightroom, you can toggle that switch that says treat them as separate files, and that way you can see them both in Lightroom. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you will not be able to see them in Lightroom. Um, and feel free to use those advanced filters because you get the raw file, and that's the secret. I don't think a lot of people know. Um, okay. What do we have here? All right. Okay, so... Anyhow, I'm going to go. Giriguana, did you want to say any, anything at all to this awesome live audience? Like, it's all about the gear! It's all about the gear! <sighs> okay, well. <laughs> I'm a 54-year-old man playing with puppets. H how awesome is that? All right, thank you so much for, for watching. <laughs> and I will... I will, I will see you in another video on Friday, and I hope you enjoyed the live stream. If you did, give it the like and subscribe, blah, 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 and you are all so awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next video. You thought I was going to end it, didn't you? You thought I was going to end it. I thought I was going to end it too, but I pressed the wrong button. It's been that kind of day. All right, let's see if I can do this. One, two, three. Nope, still live. Okay. <laughs> Wait, the... <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. All right. Um, let's 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 try it again. One, two. Three. That's it. See ya.